Hey guys, it's fall. So that must mean it's time for us to warn our clients about the fall shed, or should we? Welcome to the Lash Biz Tip of the Week, where we help you get more clients, grow your business, and become a better lash artist. Roughly since about 2012, we first started noticing posts advising clients to watch out for the fall shed. Since that time, it's become a regular occurrence to expect to see public service type messages regarding fall shed from lash artists. Well, first of all, what is the fall shed? It's a belief held by some that because hair grows more in the warm summer months at the change of the seasons, like some mammals that molt their winter coats, we also lose excess eyelash growth when fall comes. I know you probably just want to know, is it true or not? Do we shed lashes dramatically when the weather turns cool? It happens with some animals. Does it apply to humans as well? Well, my goal is for us to come to this conclusion together. But I have to give you a little bit more info so that you can make your own decision. I want you to understand what you believe and why. If you type in seasonal hair loss in fall or for any of the other four seasons, you might find a link to a magazine type article which gives a cursory information about the subject. In a nutshell, studies are alluded to but not cited that suggest there's more hair growth in warmer months which would in theory precipitate a fallout when the season changes. There are indeed a couple of studies that show hair does grow more in warmer months. So can we say that fall shed is real now? Not quite. Seasonal Change and Human Hair Growth, published by the British Journal of Dermatology in February of 1991, showed that hair grows more in warmer months. But there are some limits to the study. For example, this was based on head hair only, not on eyelashes, which we know have a markedly different growth cycle than head hair. The sample of people they tested was small and homogeneous. They studied 14 Caucasian men aged 18 to 39 who lived in one locale in the UK. No women, no eyelashes, and no other ethnicities. So that study is a good suggestion for eyelashes, but it's not definitive because they weren't tested. Seasonality of hair shedding in healthy women complaining of hair loss was published by Dermatology in April 29, 2009. This study was more broad in its scope. The researchers studied over 800 women over six years. The results confirmed the findings that indicate seasonal changes in human hair growth, although the authors state this was the only the first study performed syst uh, systematically in a representative number of women, which is a great start, but it usually takes a consensus with a body of studies proving the same findings. And remember, this definitive study was done on head hair, not on eyelashes. I connected with Dr. Warren Stout, a nationally recognized ophthalmologist and oculoplastic surgeon who used his research credentials to search the National Center for Biotechnology Information, called the NCBI, or, and the National Library of Medicine and the National Institute of Health for all available studies on seasonal eyelash loss or matarosis and found that there's an absence of scientific literature supporting it. I'm going to get into the weeds here with citations so it may get a little tedious but I know that those of you who are interested in knowing all the facts will appreciate it. There were a few studies about matarosis, which is specific eyelash loss. One study, Matarosis and Epinephrine Therapy, published in 1972 by doctors Cass, Stampler, and Becker, listed extensive disease states that cause eyelash loss. Seasonal shedding was not one of them. But to show you how the scientific world works, the Journal of American Medical Association, or JAMA, published a letter to the editor in Ophthalmology, December 1973, to suggest that the authors left out one notable cause for lash loss, leprosy. Well, nowadays we call it Hansen's disease, but this is a perfect example of iron sharpening iron in academia. Publishing studies allow for more eyes on a topic, or testing it, if you will. Looking for collaboration, open to critique in the testing, the sampling, the conclusion, some doctors in the know said, hey, we know that leprosy causes lash loss. Let's tell them so that they know to include it in the next study. And ultimately, that's what ensued. We're still trying to figure out if eyelash false shed is supported by the science. Hang with me. I think this will help. In November 2006, in the Survey of Ophthalmology, a study titled Matarosis was published by Drs. Kong, Castle, Huigel, and Salva, and their research included numerous case causes of eyelash loss, like hypothyroidism, herpes zoster, HIV, etc. Leprosy was included this time. They show that lash loss may occur through two pathways, scarring and non-scarring. 
The causes of disease or etiology as is known were thoroughly discussed, like sometimes it's dermatological, sometimes it's infection or endocrine, sometimes it's trauma, sometimes it's congenital, like it's a birth, if they're born, somebody's born with it. The study includes the clinical history and examination of patients with matarosis. And what I found noteworthy is that it does not discuss seasonal lash loss. Now, I'm not saying that it doesn't exist. I'm saying there's not a lot of scientific evidence for seasonal matarosis or seasonal lash loss at this time. Now, maybe in your neighborhood it is a known thing because you're, of your locale, maybe it doesn't get much sun and it's cold. If it were an issue that was truly impactful, I would expect to see evidence of this hair head shedding or eyelash loss in the medical literature that was produced by researchers who'd seen it in those locales or those, those areas where they don't get much sun. Some of these studies are so arcane, I found one about the incidence of trichotillomania induced by anxiety or nighttime enuresis. In layman's terms, a kid was so afraid of wetting the bed that he pulled his eyelashes out. Now, I am not making fun of that, but it was authored by nine doctors in Japan. And if they have time to study and publish issues like this, I'm sure lash loss by seasons would also be on the radar of doctors and cosmetic companies. Uh, there's a lot of money to be made, right? But up until now, there's not a lot in defini of definitive evidence. Marketers want to sell us stuff. Latisse is made by Allergan. They have lots of research and lots of money. Don't you think that they would have tapped into this need and market their growth serums to solve this problem of seasonal lash loss? Where are the mascara campaigns to solve this dilemma? Now, I understand that just because we don't see these things doesn't mean it doesn't exist. The truth is, every time I see a client, a client comes in, I see evidence of lash loss. Anecdotally, I don't see it more in specific seasons. If you do and you need to schedule more time for your lashes in the fall, more power to you. I'm not throwing shade on you. I support you. You know your business and your clients better than anyone else. I just want to encourage you as lash artists, one of the biggest challenges that impacts our bottom line is retention. It's a big concern for clients because they complain when lashes don't last. I have found myself looking for answers for why lashes don't last. One big temptation for us is thinking that there are conditions that are out of my control to explain, or our control, right? There are indeed some. I want to encourage you to shift your thinking and try to get more longevity in any and every situation you have. Maybe she truly has a health issue that leads to faster fallout. We cannot do anything to influence her internal hormones or disease states. But what can we do as lash artists? We can improve our bonds. Try tweaking your application. Use more adhesive and bond more surface area. You can't control external or internal factors, health factors, but you can control the bonds. Even if you do have challenges, pursue better bonds. You'll be more profitable and professional when you do. So, can we now say that fall shed is real? Because there are at least a few studies that show head hair grows more during the summer months. Well, I spoke with Dr. Shirley Chi, a dermatologist and UCLA fellow and Channel 7 contributor regarding this issue. I see definitely seasonal shedding cycles in terms of hair growth and um, fingernail growth. In the summer, your hair grows faster, your fingernails grow faster, you'll notice you have to clip your nails more. But I don't see that in terms of eyelash growth or eyebrow growth at all. We don't see it as a clinical issue. In other words, there's some things, some things are measurable, but they're not clinically significant. Does that make sense? Yeah. You know, it might be true to a small degree, but does anybody complain about it or notice it? No. One reason we could see more lash loss in fall or spring could be seasonal allergies. People tend to rub their eyes more during this time, which of course can cause lashes to shed. Well, in conclusion, is the fall shed real? For me, it's never been an issue in my 15 plus years of lashing. Between me and my team, we've done well over 60,000 sets of lashes and never saw this trend in our salon. There have been some studies done on the subject, but the focus was on head hair and not eyelashes. Lastly, if this was an issue, beauty and cosmetic companies would be selling us solutions for the problem. So if you are seeing this trend in your business, my encouragement to you is to work on making better bonds. For me, the key to great longevity is using more adhesive and bonding a larger surface area. Have a great week. <laughs>